Hello and welcome to the Complete Idiot's Guide to Airbrushing. I am your Complete Idiot. This is part one, airbrushes and to a lesser extent compressors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over airbrushes. I'm going to take it from the point of view of you're buying your first airbrush kit. You basically don't want to spend too much money, but you want to get something that will work for you and will let you grow a little bit as you go, you know, so it won't be just you can prime with it and nothing else. I want to get you something that will get you started, get you going into the first stages, and then you'll realize you'll hit the limitation of the tool and you'll want to spend a bit more to buy a proper airbrush, a proper airbrush. So branded, so like Badger, Hardin Steinbeck, or Iwata, or any of the other named manufacturers. I can't comment on any of the other ones, but if you ask me about my hard-earned Steenbeck or my Badger brushes, I will give a good review of them. They're all really good brushes, but they are more expensive. So what we're going to look at is just these cheap generic ones. What I'm going to do first is start off going over the various bits of brushes I've got here, the types of brushes. Then I'm going to go on to Amazon and show you some kits that you could consider buying. I will put links to those kits in the description and they will be affiliate links, so I will get a kickback if you buy them. But don't feel like you have to go for those ones. We've got four generic brushes. So these are unbranded, just generic brushes. I'm going to ignore these ones for now. So we'll move those off to the side and those two. And I'm just going to show you the various bits of the brush that when you're buying it, you want to look out for. But we'll go over the types I've got here first. First type of brush we're going to look at is this. This is Siphon Feed. So you can see that we've got our bottle and our brush. This simply plugs in there. And obviously I can unscrew the bottle to fill it with paint. So nothing too technical with this, but what this gives you is a large paint reservoir. The problem is you have to spray it higher pressure because it's having to suck the paint up rather than gravity helping to push it down. This one has to suck it up. So what you want to look for is a kit that doesn't have one of these as its only airbrush. So if you're buying a single brush, you want one like this, right? So it's just a standard gravity feed brush. You want to make sure it's dual action. So what dual action means, and all these brushes are dual action, it means that you push down for air, that's your first action, and you pull back for paint, that's your second action, so dual action. Why you would want a siphon feed? purely 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 when you need to paint an awful lot of stuff in one go and that's it and you won't be able to do detail work as well with it because your pressure is up higher so literally terrain would be the first main use if you're painting a board of terrain like i've got a load of sector mechanica stuff and i've got a load of mdf stuff this is really handy for that because you can use craft paints and stuff thin down and blast it through this and it's fine or if you want to prime an entire army in one go if you've got like 2000 points you need to paint by tomorrow you know like orc boys this will help you prime it because you can fill that with primer water it down a bit and away you go and you just keep going so that's the siphon feed don't get a kit that just has that though now this one is more interesting this is side feed so as you can see the paint cup is on the side hence side feed this has two drawbacks the first is that it's very side heavy, so it wants to drop round. And that means you're using a bit of your muscle strength to keep your wrist turned. So if you've got bad wrists for any particular reason, <clears throat> then this can, RSI, I type a lot. That's RSI, it's not my fault. The second problem with this brush is you won't see it if you're right-handed because you're looking at it from above. So this is actually an advantage for this brush if you're right-handed. You can see pretty much exactly what you're spraying at, much easier to get precision. The drawback is I'm not right-handed, I am left-handed. Uh, yeah, so you can see there the problem with this brush if you're left-handed. So you tempted then to sort of come in from the side, so you're twisting your wrist even more and then twisting it back around. It's, it's not a good brush. It gives you a lot of pain in your wrist. It took me a while to work out why I didn't like that one. I mean, it's a perfectly functional brush, it works. And if I was right-handed, it would probably be a bit easier to use, but so try to keep away from those two if you can. If you can't, you know, they work, but you can pick up a brush like this. So this one is a standard 
as they come. This has got a little dial at the back. You can see I can screw that in and out. A lot of the cheap airbrushes come with this and a lot of the lower entry level expensive brushes don't. What this is, is a needle stop. So actually it's easier to demonstrate on this brush because you can actually see the needle chuck. This is the little screw that holds the needle in place. So as you can see, I can pull completely back on this brush and it's fine. If I screw that in, you can see it coming in towards the chuck needle and I can't pull it back anymore. So that's what that does. That restricts the amount you can pull the needle out. So that will restrict the amount of paint that will come out at any one time. Now that sounds useful to a beginner. Um, and it kind of is, it'll stop you doing stupid things where you accidentally whack it the whole way back and obliterate your lovely paint job. But I don't use it. It's kind of like training wheels for your bike. Um, I don't use it because I'm at the point now where I don't do that anymore. I did it like maybe once or twice when I was just starting. And to be honest, it's a good way to learn by having it out of the way because if you do it once, you're really, really, really careful not to do it again. And I like to use a full pull back in the trigger to clear any little blockages or um, when I'm cleaning it as well, you can do that. So, and it's not annoying to unscrew it, but it's a step you don't want to have to do. So if I'm spraying away in a model, like, you know, and then I get a bit of a clog, point it away and yank the trigger back to help clear the blockage. And that works quite well. So that's a little thing. So don't go out of your way to buy one with these. It's not, it's not even a nice to have. It's a, okay, whatever. So don't worry about that. But what you do want to worry about is the bit at the front. This piece is usually called the needle cap, at least that I've seen. I've seen different names for it, the crown cap. But what it does is if I unscrew it gently, you can see that there we have our needle just poking out the end and that's very sharp. And you can sort of see the nozzle, not really, but what we've got here is, if I screw that back on, and what that does is it protects your needle from you accidentally dropping it down. You won't bend your needle or stab yourself in the finger, which by the way, <laughs> the first couple of times you do that with a needle is really bloody sore. Or every time you do it in the needle, but you'll stop. But you see in this brush that it's got a little crown shaped one and it still blocks the needle. So you're probably thinking, well, why does it matter the shape of it? Why does that matter compared to that one? Well, one of the things you'll want to do is to be able to block that, push down in there to pull back a little bit. And what that'll do is it'll allow air to come up into your brush, not be able to go out. So it'll force it back and then up into the cup where it'll bubble and mix anything in there or force any little flakes of paint that are blocking your nozzle, force those back up and into the cup where It'll take a while, but they'll sink down and block again. So it's a handy little thing. Also, when you're cleaning, you can put your cleaner in your paint cup, you know, wash it out a few times, put some cleaner in there and then bubble it through, give it a blast, bubble it, give it a blast, bubble it, pour it out, get some more and just keep doing that to clean it, which you cannot do with this crown shape. Now, what you can do instead is pinch it, but that is less reliable and an annoyance but it does kind of work. One thing I will say though, that the best cap I've ever got is this one on the Harder and Stingbeck because you literally just pinch it and it works great. And it, it's also reasonably good at protecting your needle. On something like the Badger, you can see that the needle actually protrudes out the front. So you need to use the little rubber cap that comes with it. So there's swings and roundabouts to all the designs, but this one is slightly better. Now you're probably wondering, well, if that's better, why don't they all have that? This does affect the spray pattern of the, the cone that comes out with the air and the paint in it. It makes it slightly wider. These ones are practically disposable. Like I think this one was 20 quid. These two came with my compressor and this one was like 12 quid. Although I think it's a bit more expensive now. This one I love because it's aluminium. So it's very light. I would definitely recommend you pick up one of these. Now that's one thing I want to say right now, get more than one brush. Um, it's very easy to wonder if you've only one brush, 
is it the brush that's causing you problems if you have two brushes you're able to try the same paint consistency and see if it works in one or not the other if it doesn't work in both it's probably the paint consistency if it works in one but not the other then you're able to say well this one's got a smaller needle this one's got a bigger needle it works in the big one not the small one maybe i need to thin it down a bit more for the small one that sort of thing so having multiple brushes is really really nice and these aluminium ones are so cheap i would definitely recommend picking one up it also comes with its own little paint cap so get one of these i'll show you these on amazon as well i'll put links to the one i've got so that's pretty much everything you care about with this one more thing though is if you can pick up these so you notice there that that literally just pops on and pops off this is a quick release fitting you can get these standalone or some of the kits come with it so i'll be trying to find them in the kits if they're not in the kits then i'll put a link to buying some of these as well these are very handy to have because you can just pop them off your hose and away you go no fuss no muss so what we're going to do now is go over to the computer and i'm going to have some preloaded pages i'm not going to do the search it takes too long some preloaded pages on amazon and i'll show you which kits i think are good and that i would spend money on and i'll put links to those in the description and it's up to you whether or not you buy them i don't care well i do care but you know it's up to you your money so here we are at the pc looking at amazon i thought i would show you this one just because it's a don't buy unless you literally have no money to spend so you can see here what we've got is um, a little mini compressor you get you do get a hose and you do get an airbrush with it so you know it's not exactly bad value it's just that it won't grow with you you can use this for priming and anything that doesn't require real control of your air pressure because this won't give it to you you literally adjust the pressure by this little screw here and in and out and that's all it is so i would say stay away from this i wouldn't even say buy it as a little travel adapter or travel one but just it's not really worth it not if you can spend a bit more money and get so here's the first one i find so this one as you can see it's got three airbrushes this one's useful this one's single action so not useful at all and then this one's siphon feed so we discussed the limited you know viability of a siphon feed brush it's not really that useful but other than that you do get a quick release connector with it you do get a little stand which you can unscrew that red thing drop that on screw the red thing back on and then that'll let you hold your airbrushes you get a little set of cleaning sticks which you probably won't use and you get some stencils for some reason so yeah and you get your hose it's very important you have a hose there's no point getting everything at the you just you need a hose let's be honest so for 72.99 that's not bad now this one doesn't have a tank i have never used one without a tank so i cannot in good conscience say that you should go for the one without a tank because i don't have one without a tank so i've got this one with a tank and these are the same airbrushes that i got so you can see um I showed you earlier the airbrushes as I got them so th there is the same ones um, there's not much else to say about this except it's the slightly more modern compressor slightly newer compressor I think I can't work out if it's got a fan some of these newer compressors have a fan in them which is useful because it keeps it cool they do tend to heat up I'm not saying they overheat but they get quite hot so that's a potential one you might want to look at then I've got this one which has just one airbrush with it no siphon feed no side feed it's just one airbrush and it's slightly cheaper um so you might want to go for this one then buy a second airbrush i thought i'd mention booths this is one of the little spray booths you can get obviously you wouldn't point it back at yourself that's completely stupid but this basically sucks air in that blue things a filter and then it'll let spit out the clean air i would say you don't need these unless you are using lacquers or enamels you know things that you really really don't want to breathe in but then you might want to get a respirator as well so you know i'm not saying you don't need one of these for acrylics but i don't use one that's my personal preference so some people have them some people don't 
Then I'm having a look at some airbrushes here and I find this one which has three needles and you also get your hose with it so you could buy the compressor separate and then buy this if you could find a better deal. You know there's nothing wrong with this you can see you get your three nozzle sizes 0 0.2 uh, where's it 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0.5 I think it said scrolly scrolly okay there's it in inches but it's 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 millimeters that's what confused me I've seen inches it's got your standard air fittings on it so it's it's a decent little brush or you can go for this one which is the aluminium one which also has three needles and it is slightly cheaper so this is probably the one I would go for if I were you as as a, you know your second brush your supplementary one you want to get to give the the kit that little bit extra or you can just go for the single aluminium one which you can see here's 13.99 there are slightly more expensive ones that come in different colors like there's same brush basically in gold so that's the same one I've got. I remember it was KK Moon. So if you want it in gold, you can spend a bit extra. If you search around, you can find it in black as well. But I didn't really care that much. So Now it's worth noting that this one doesn't have the extra hose. And it doesn't have a quick release connector or anything with it. Does that one have quick release? No. Doesn't have quick release. And nor does that one. So we'll get to that in a minute. And then I find this one, which is gold plated. I'm dropping air quotes in massive eye rolling irony. Gold plated. It does come with a quick release connector though, which is nice, but it's just it's just gold and I laughed my head off when I saw it and I thought you guys might like it. So I'm not saying buy this one. Unless you're like what's his name? Gold member from Austin Powers. Yeah. But yeah. I mean I'm I'm seriously having a hard time not laughing. You might want to get one of these, especially if you're doing enamels and lacquers and things, because this lets you spray your brush, your brush clean. I don't use mine as a cleaning station, I literally use it as an airbrush stand. Um, but you also get the little, uh, that gold thing with the spike on it is a nozzle cleaner. So you can gently put it up inside of the nozzle and gently turn it to try to scrape the inside clean of dried paint. You can damage your nozzle doing that, so you want to be careful. but. I'll do a cleaning video as well. So actually speaking of cleaner, we've got thinner. You will want to pick up some proper thinner. Uh, you can make your own, but when you're starting out, you probably want to have something to compare it to. So buying the official thinner could be useful. Uh, it's only a tenner and 200 mils will last you a long ass time. Plus you've then got the bottle at the end, so you can make your own and refill this bottle and just scrub out Vallejo and write mine. Same with the cleaner, you can get the cleaner or you can just use, uh, I use methylated spirits for my cleaner, I just literally squirt a little in um, and I'm done or isopropyl alcohol or even just soapy water sometimes is enough if the paint's not dry. So, but cleaner is useful to have and also another useful thing to have is flow improver which goes with your thinner to help it go through the airbrush. Uh, I've got that as well and sometimes depending on my mood I'll use this or the thinner back and forth back and forth or a mix of the two just depending on so they both work quite well together but if you don't really need that if you're getting the thinner and then there's these set of quick release connectors so you can swap between brushes or even just swap the brush off the cable really really easily so I would definitely say get some of these and they're only £7.50. Now, I thought I would show you another brush you can get. Now, this is just everything airbrush. I don't have any sort of connection to these guys. It's just I have bought from them before. Not the Badger, though. I got mine off Badger directly. Um, but I got my Ultra off them. So this is the same brush I've got. They've got a lot of other Badger brushes, but this is the Patriot Arrow. So it's 92 quid, so I mean, it is much more expensive than the other brushes, but it is a very nice brush. So you might want to be consider this as your first proper upgrade. Again, dropping air quotes where no one can see. There are other brushes, it's just this is probably one of the best entry level 
I almost said budget at 92 quid, but you know what I mean. Best entry level proper airbrushes because you can use this straight away. The Ultra that I've got, I have spent money that took me above this price to mod it so that I am now happy with it. I've added a needle nozzle set for the Infinity. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that maybe some other time, but this is probably your best go-to starter brush. And then you'll want to get one of these as well if you get that, which is the quick release coupling tail. So this is different to these ones. It fits, this bit's the same. The bit that actually plugs into the main connector is the same, but the width of the, the screw on it that goes onto the airbrush is different. Badger have their own size, so you need the Badger tail. So, I mean, it's only £3.72, so if you're buying the Badger airbrush, get one of these as well. And that's pretty much it. Now, which one of these would I go for? I, as I said, I don't have the one with the tank. Sorry, I don't have the one without a tank. I have the one with a tank. So I can't in good conscience say you're okay to just get the one without a tank. But I have seen videos of the CEO, the managing guy of Badger Airbrush, saying you do not need a tank. I have a tank, so I can't verify that. But if you know, let me know in the comments. So, given that these are side feed and siphon feed, I would probably say this one would be the closest to what I would buy because it's got its it's got a tank and it's got the pump. There are other ones out there that'll have one airbrush or two airbrushes and maybe they're 100 quid, so you might want to look at one of those. Have a wee search around, see what you like. Uh, but then I would probably get that because it has the spare needles and nozzles, which means that if you break your nozzle or bend your needle, then you've got at least a spare one you can swap out. You know, you might go from a 0.3 to a 0.5. I would save the 0.2 till last because it does make the brush just that little bit more tricksy to use. And then you obviously want to get the gold one because why wouldn't you want the gold plated airbrush? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing. If you get uh, did that one have it? Yeah, that one's got a stand already on the... I clicked on that. There we go. So that's got a stand already for two airbrushes. So you don't really need to get that separately. But you can. There are also other stands. You can get. I wonder if they're in here. Uh, no. No. Why is that one cheaper than that one? There you go, there's it even cheaper. That one didn't come up earlier. So I'll use this one as the link instead because you'll save yourself a quid. And you want to get thinner. So let's do that again. You'd probably get that one. Probably get that one. Don't need that. Get that. Maybe get that. Maybe get that. Definitely get that. And then maybe look at getting a badger. Or... Whatever airbrush manufacturer you like. If your mates have got one that's better quality, you know, not better quality than Badger, but, you know, better quality than the, the stock default ones, and you like the look of theirs, then go for their make. But just remember with the Badger, you need the adapter. I don't know about other airbrushes. Harder and Steenbeck, no, you don't. You don't need the special one. It takes the standard one, but Badger takes the special one. And all the links for everything in here, every single tab will have a link in the description of the video so knock yourselves out don't necessarily buy them off the link do your own amazon searches if you want to if you find something better go for it but definitely get an airbrush it's such a nice tool go away cookies mmm cookie anyway so for the rest of this series i'm planning on doing a introduction on how to Thin your paint to get it going through the airbrush what to look for and then I'll leave the airbrush overnight with the paint in it to dry so then do a introduction to cleaning what you need to do to clean your airbrush and then we'll take it from there and we'll see what else anybody wants so I hope you enjoyed this it's probably a bit of a longer video than usual but there's an awful lot to cover and I want to make sure I'm trying to be as thorough as possible so good luck let me know if you buy something. Let me know if you're getting the airbrushing through this video because that'd be nice to see. Anyway, that's me and I'll see you next time.
If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. There's another couple of videos there you can click on. You can click on the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, like the video if you want to. Stick a comment down if you've anything to say. And in the meantime, happy wargaming. And I'll see you next time.